Hello lovely people, welcome to another favourites video. I did a favourites video in about autumn time and I said that I was going to try and do these a little bit more regularly because I have things that I like that are not books which I would like to talk about from time to time so this is that promised video. Um, I'm going to split this sort of into um, things I've watched, things I've listened to and then other because the rest of it's all a bit random. Um, so I'm going to start off with things that I've watched recently that I've really liked. This is a slightly strange mix of stuff. Essentially, I've been really enjoying, like, soothing programs. <laughs> um, I'm going to start off with one that a lot of people have been loving recently, and that's Little Women. I have always liked Little Women. I have my um, granny's and my mum's copies of the books way up on the bookshelves up there. So I read them a lot as a child. Um, and then I have reread them throughout my entire life. I've always really enjoyed the 90s film. Um, so I was interested to see what the 2019 film was going to be like. And I was like, I'm just going to go in. I'm just going to see what it's like. It turns out I have so many feelings on it because I think it is really great. Um, first of all, I really like the framing. Um, normally, film adaptations just mimic the book and they just go through events chronologically. Whereas uh, Greta Gerwig's film flashes back and forward in time, which I think is a really interesting way to do some paralleling of moments. Um, I won't go into details of paralleling of moments so as not to spoil anything, but suffice to say if you'd like to chat about those, I have feelings. <laughs> I thought it was beautifully filmed. I've never actually seen any of Greta Gerwig's other films, although I do need to see Ladybird because I know I will love it. Um, but I thought that was, it captured such lovely like lighting and um, the way that all the girls were styled. I know that Greta in an interview said about how like they were like the original bohemians, which I would argue with, but um, I can see that there's a very bohemian styling going on at moments. There were, especially there was a moment when um, Jo was on like a sofa in like by a window and it felt very pre-Raphaelite to me. So um, historical accuracy to one side, I really enjoyed the styling and the, all of that sort of stuff. But my favourite thing is really, um, I thought that Saoirse Ronan and Florence Pugh just did absolutely stand out performances and I thought they were amazing. Um, jo is always one who I think people who have loved reading the books have always connected to and I thought that Saoirse did a really great portrayal of that. Um, I enjoyed the Joe laurie relationship. Little Women is something that has been adapted so many times, especially that 90s adaptation being quite iconic. Um, I loved how both, how the Joe and Laurie relationship was different to how it is in that film, but you still get such an understanding of where they connect with each other. But also I really did feel like it was very platonic from Joe's point of view, which I liked. Whereas in the 90s one, you can kind of see how it is portrayed as like there's a potential for romance there. I don't know, I liked that. Um, I also thought that Florence Pugh as Amy was absolutely brilliant because I loved Amy in this. And I think sometimes it's very easy to vilify Amy and view her as like a bratty child and that sort of thing. Whereas this gave so much more room and space for the girls to be sisters and for that to be in all of its messy entirety that you can see how Amy is a person who feels overshadowed by Jo and that sort of thing and then when she does terrible things it's because it's how you elicit a reaction from this person who just doesn't seem to care about like you know what doesn't seem to care but like can sometimes be a bit indifferent to your experiences through life I don't know um I just thought that it was really great and I loved it a lot <laughs> I won't go into everything else as much detail as I did that one, but I have lots of feelings. Um, all of the rest of my watching things are TV shows, um, starting with The Great Pottery Throwdown. Um, the Great Pottery Throwdown is to pottery what The Great British Bake Off is to cakes. And I, I've never watched it before this series, um, and I've absolutely loved it. I really want to do pottery. I've not done any pottery. My granny used to do a lot of pottery, so I just really want to have a go at it. Um, so it's just so much fun seeing all the different challenges. Um, I really like that the judge, I can't remember the name of the male judges, I can't remember his name, but um, <laughs> he cries quite a lot. And I just think that's really lovely to just see this like grown man who's like proper bloke, but just like weep openly about how beautiful these pottery creations are. And I also love that when it's judged, um, there is a the side that is, is this a beautiful piece of art? But then there is also the side that is, is this a functional object? Does it actually do what it's supposed to do? Because if it doesn't, you will be marked down for that, which is fair because it's product design as well as beautiful art. 
And I just think it's really lovely and very soothing and it has been bringing me much, much joy. There's a recurring theme through the rest of these TV shows of things which I'm finding really soothing that are bringing me joy. Um, Ainsley Harriet has a new cooking show. I think it's called Ainsley Harriet's Caribbean Kitchen, but that might be wrong. Essentially, he's travelling around and he's doing some cooking, but it's Ainsley and he's such a babe. And one thing I really like about Ainsley Harriet is that like when he he's a very good presenter, he's very good at like presenting information to you and how he's cooking things, but also in a way that shows you that he's having a lot of fun and I really appreciate that. Um, so it's just been really lovely to have him on my screen. I, in, when I was waiting for his show to come on, I caught a bit of a Rick Stein show, which I had the complete opposite reaction to, and I absolutely hated it, because it was, it was from like 2002, and it was just Rick Stein travelling around Britain, so say, talking about how great British cuisine is, what he was actually doing was being like, it's disgraceful that you go into a pub and they have beef rendang on the menu instead of this, and by this he's like made a rabbit stew or something. And I'm just like, babe, fuck off, A. And then also B, I went on Twitter and someone was like, I've just made Rick Stein's beef red dang recipe. And I was like, fuck you, Rick Stein. Um, also, he was very patronising to a lot of people on the show and I just hated it. And then Ainsley came on and cheered me up and I was like, yes, Ainsley, thank you. Um, anyway, ranting aside... Also, um, some documentaries, which I've been very much enjoying. There is a whole range of documentaries that I think are on BBC4, but I've been watching them on iPlayer, which are like following an animal around. So there's one which is like a hawk that's just flying through the skies, and you're like got a little camera attached to the hawk, and you're just like experiencing life through a hawk's eye view. There's another which is a sea turtle, which is precious because every sea, every day the sea turtle goes to like this little place in the ocean where these little fish like clean him and eat the little gunk off of his shell, and that's precious. Um, there's also ones which are similar, but they follow like people. So one that I am halfway through because it's like three hours long is um, a Sami woman and a reindeer and they're just like walking through the snow occasionally they bump into people that she knows and she like has a little chat and that sort of thing but they're just sort of like journeying and that's really soothing to also have on I tend to have these on while I'm doing like other things but it's just like really nice just to like have it and then finally, other documentaries also on BBC iPlayer. I can't remember the exact name, but it's um, companies that have like that royal, you know, they have a little stamp that's like by royal decree or whatever. Um, so um, the two I've watched are Wedgwood Pottery, again, Pottery, <laughs> and Steinway Pianos. And you just see how these beautiful things are created. Like, so much work and time goes into all all of this stuff and it's absolutely just there's something i'm really enjoying about watching people who are extremely skilled in the craft that they do just making something beautiful and doing it by hand and not rushing and that sort of thing it's just very soothing those are all of the things i've been watching i don't know i haven't been stressed stressed but i have had a lot of colds this winter and so when my little brain is hurting and my body is hurting it's just so nice to just be like wrapped in a duvet and just watch people who are very skilled make beautiful things and like animals exist it's lovely right onto a listening things front um one musician who i've been really enjoying recently is angie mcmahon I, Ma, 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 Ma. I'm sorry. Um, she is a, she's a singer, she plays guitar. Um, I found out about her because Hosier, who is another musician who's just a lifetime fave, um, online he did like Q&A sessions on Twitter sometimes and someone asked him what he was listening to and he said her and I was like, oh, well, I really like this man's music so like, let's check out what she makes. Um, I sh I'm going to leave a link below to her cover of Knowing Me, Knowing You by Abba because it's really great. It reminds me a lot of Heinz's cover of That Don't Impress Me Much. Um, it is like a similar sort of tempo and mood and vibe that's created by both of those, which puts like that such like a distinct stamp on what is like an iconic song. So I really like that, but also just like her music in general, I've really been enjoying. And then a podcast I've really been enjoying is Secret Feminist Agenda, which is run by Hannah McGregor, who is also known as one half of Witch Please, although Witch Please podcast has ceased by now. Um, I just find Secret Feminist Agenda brilliant. I just think it's really, it is constantly introducing me to concepts and angles on things and like ways to do better, but then also like reassurance that like it's okay, you're trying very hard, you can like, <laughs> you don't have to constantly be like, I need to do more. You can also sometimes be like, I am a human being with limitations. 
Um, and just like different podcast episodes explore different topics. Sometimes she has um, guests on there where they also just explore topics. One that really stuck with me recently was one that's from a while ago, which was all about roller derby. That was super interesting. Um, but then, like, also just like Cozy Resolutions was a late, was a really recent one that I really liked. Um, so yeah, they, that's been giving me a lot to think about. I've just realised I missed something off of my watching thing. I've been doing a lot of watching, I think, of things. Um, I've also really been enjoying watching Sorted Foods' uh, YouTube channel. They are a food channel. They do lots of um, challenges and stuff like that. So they do, um, essentially, Sorted Food are two professional chefs and three what they call normals. And they have lots of challenges. So sometimes it's the three guys competing against each other and then the chefs are judging. Sometimes it's the chefs competing and the guys are judging. Sometimes they're all doing a pass it on challenge where like someone starts a dish and they all tap in and then it's like, what do you end up with at the end of it? Stuff like that. I really like food. I like watching people who are skilled make food and stuff like that. So it's a lot of fun. We're now going to move on to the section of this, which is other, where I actually have things to show you. So, while I have been watching all of these soothing, soothing things, I have also been lighting some scented candles. I have loads of scented candles. I sort of didn't use them for ages because I wasn't sure if we were allowed to use candles because we rent. And then I was like, yeah, we are. It's fine. I just have to not set fire to the building. So, um, my current combination is um, Oliver Bonus Fig. And then this is uh, White Fig and Patchouli. I think it's just like... Sainsbury's, but someone got it for me for Christmas, as did someone get me this for Christmas. And then also, um, this is just in here, it's just a vanilla candle. So um, the combination of those three is like a really nice smell that's not overpowering, because I have been a bit ill and a bit headachey. <laughs> so it's not been like overpowering scents, but it has been like lovely, lovely soothing. And then while doing that, I have continued to pom pom. I don't think I mentioned last time, but a favourite is my basket that I keep my pom, my wool in. Um, I did not make these. I do think they're lovely. I will link to this down below. I'll link to everything down below if I can. But specifically, I found this yarns, which are multicolored. So as you make poms, obviously the color varies. So for example, this yarn turns into poms that look like this. And I just think that's really cool and cute. So that's a definite favorite. And I've done a lot of evenings of having like the turtle all in the background while I have candles lit and make pom poms. So you know, that's lovely. Um, another thing I've been really liking is um, I bought a book sleeve. I think it was a book olive who introduced me to the concept of book sleeves, but um, this is my book sleeve. It's Buffy themed. Isn't it great? <laughs> but um, essentially you just put your book in here. Because I read a lot on public transport, that's where I get like, most of my reading done, commuting to work and back. Um, and also I work in the middle of nowhere and it gets very rainy and wet. So um, this just helps stop my books from getting so bashed around and keeps them a bit dry if it rains and stuff like that. So actually, I'm a convert. This is a paperback size one. I think I also want to buy a hardback size one, but I will link to this specific one down below. Although if anyone has any book sleeve um, recommendations for like hardback size, do let me know because I am looking for a second one. And then finally, I am going to just end on a little run of um, some perfume and skincare stuff. So. Um, essentially, I've got two new perfumes in my life. One of them is not new, new, but is new again. So, first of all is Rose Jam by Lush. This smells, obviously, of rose, but um, you get different rose scents depending on what type of rose you're using, I assume. Um, I just really love this particular rose smell. This is very strong, like one spritz, maximum two, and you're sorted for the day. And it's got sort of like a warmth. It's a uh, rose with lemon. And I just think it's very rich and indulgent and sort of more of like an evening smell for me. Um, my favourite perfume of all time, Si, by Giorgio Armani. I have not had this for quite a while because this is bloody expensive. I bought this when it was just released. Sometimes when perfumes are just released, they come in at the release at like a lower price point to get people interested. And then they hoik up the price. And that is what happened to me. Um, this can cost anywhere between 50 to 70 pounds, which quite frankly is too much to spend on a smell. A smell. So I've just been like, I guess I will just never own this perfume ever again. And then my friend was like, you do realize that after Christmas, they sell gift sets off at a cheaper price. And so for the great, great pound of 30 pounds, this is mine. <laughs> which is like, I will spend 30 pounds on a smell apparently because I'm gonna eke this out forever, but it is lovely. It's like, um, 
I don't know how to describe it. There's sort of like a vanilla-y musky smell, but then there's also like blackberries, and it's just, it's quite, um, this is like a chunk. This is just like delicate and layered. So like different modes, different vibes, but I'm loving both. Finally, oh god, so many favourites this time. Finally is a skincare. I've mentioned before I have terrible skin. It's eczema, it's sensitive. My whole body swelled up that one time. It was not a good time. So I try and be really kind, but also not too complicated with my skin. So before I go to bed most nights, I put a facial oil on just to help this little skin recover from all of the terrible things I do. Um, so I've really been enjoying Skin and Tonic Naked Beauty Oil, which is essentially rosehip, because rosehip is something that I am big on, but also rosehip, apricot kernel oil, pumpkin seed oil, and then vitamin E, which is exactly what my skin needs to help it recover and stop being so dry and terrible. But Skin and Tonic are a UK-based brand. They make, I think they're based in London. Um, they're vegan, they're cruelty free, um, all of that jazz, but also they're like soil association certified organic, stuff like that. So I just, I like them, I like this, it's currently doing a job, I haven't been using it for that long, but my skin has been feeling quite nice, so thought I would give it a mention. That is everything I wanted to talk about in this favourites video. It kind of feels like I've been watching a lot recently. That's because I have had a number of colds, so I've actually been reading slightly less because my brain hasn't quite been here, so you know. But um, I would love to know what you've been loving recently, whether that is watching things, reading things, listening to things, or just like random stuff. Do let me know, I would love to hear it. And I would also like to know if you have consumed any of these things in any form, that would also be nice. But otherwise, um, I hope you're having a lovely day, and I'm going to see you next time for something different.